Okay folks, I hope you can see me all right and the sound is on again. Okay, sorry for that, it just seemed for a moment that I wasn't broadcasting. I see people that climbing in now, that's good, thank you. I'm assuming also you're hearing me, that would be really helpful if you can just confirm that. Let me see, um, just somebody just say that, can you hear me okay? I'm assuming so, there seems to be activity, that's good. Okay, so welcome back, um, didn't expect to be doing this, um, but certainly after last night's feedback in terms of all those wonderful um, comments and of course the what is it thumbs up and sort of uh, you know um, hearts and stuff flying up the other side of the screen uh, I, I've been inspired to continue um, we ran out of time last night and I think again I'm going to aim for one hour exactly and see how much we can get in um, there's been some questions have come in already uh, they were morely at more more about maybe going over more of mind store type techniques which I will add in if we get the chance but I want to pick up on <coughs> oh, <coughs> excuse me um I'll just get a glass of water I want to pick up from a couple of things from last night that are really important first of all I didn't get round to demonstrating the algorithm that the great and wonderful Roger Callahan um uh, discovered for managing um, fear and anxiety. Um, I talked about doing it, but we ran out of time. And so I want, I want to do that this evening because it's going to be really important. It's a tool that you'll be able to use to manage your own anxiety, your own fears. More importantly, do it for family and loved ones, friends even. And who knows, colleagues. Obviously, some of us thought the, we're getting locked down uh, tomorrow night and it'll be announced today. So far, it hasn't happened. So that's good news. Or is it, depending on who is giving the advice, but then let's not go there. Um, so there's there's this that technique. And then, of course, you may remember I I assumed that one of the great Mindstone members, um, Hazel Marco, was on, or would have been on. And, you know, I've worked with her in the past. She's got an amazing toolkit, particularly around uh, the whole thing about making decisions, make, you know, choices at any given moment from a deeply intuitive place that you can really, really trust because, I, I, and she thankfully responded to my call. We had a call this afternoon. She sent me an email to describe some stuff and a very important link. Some other people have also sent me some links that once I had a better look, closer look at them, I'll decide whether or not to pass them on. Please don't inundate me with that, especially if you're selling something. I know you probably wouldn't, but the other person has a go at that. Um, it's stuff that I personally would uh, have experience of and use, and I believe it can help. So there you go. Um, so we'll cover uh, Hazel stuff, we'll cover the Thought Fuel Therapy algorithm and then we'll do some more Mindstore type stuff and any other questions that may appear on what for me is my left hand screen of my iPhone here. Now the challenge is if I'm concentrating and doing this I get no idea what's happening. I can't really go there and read or look. I, you know, you're streaming away and you can all see it which is good. You can maybe interact with one another. If I get um, to work back questions that I can stop and just have a look at them, then I'll see if I can pick them up. And if I don't, please, please you know, don't get upset. It's just that I'm, I'm doing the best I can with the resources I have. Uh, and as I say, I'm working on the, the iPhone for lots of reasons of, because of stuff we want to do for you guys in the future. But anyway, so let's, let's, um, let's look at decision making, if we will, uh, right away. One, one of the things that uh, I've been doing for years and years and years is whenever I'm making a simple decision, like do, do I buy this book, do I buy, do I buy this um, supplement, let's say, in you know a health food store, um, simple choices like that. Do I, you know, I'm looking at the, you know, as some of you know, I, I I'm now now eating a lot of meat at the moment, and um, because I've grown the the um, keto type diet, I've experimented with it. I'm quite happy with meat at the moment. Uh, and so, but but if I if I go to the, the you know to Waitrose and I stand there in front of the chiller and I pull out a, 
a ribeye or something, I'm going to ask myself, should, should I buy this or not? Is this good for me at this time? Those kind of questions, is it worth my while reading, reading this book? Is it really, really going to help me to take this supplement? And sometimes that's, that's on a daily basis because a supplement might have been good yesterday, might not be so, so good today. Um, maybe you need a break from it. And so listening to your body through decision-making tools, I find they've been really helpful. And we've got the classic Meister ones, which we'll begin with, then we'll ramp up to the wonderful uh, stuff that Hazel's provided us, provided us with, Hazel Market. So you may remember on the Mindstore courses, where you were, that I introduced you to the notion of, you, you know, the fact that we are tend, tend to have a dominance in our thinking strategy. So some of us are more audio than others, some are more visual than others, some are more kinesthetic. That means we're more about feeling things. And one of the frustrations for a lot of Mindstore people initially, until they really accepted what I was saying and understood it, there's, there's that... Not everyone sees beautiful landscapes with wonderful flowing rivers and fantastic uh, houses with red roofs or beautiful islands if we're doing the island programme. Uh, many do, of course, because they're primarily visual thinkers. And a lot of people who are also in this field, for some reason, deny this, which is fascinating to me. I find audiences to be, uh, you know, not everybody in an audience can see clearly with their inner, their inner sight. Um, a lot of them are like me, they're more audio. Um, I think more in terms of describing things to myself and, and I get fleeting images, of course, but I know if I'm imagining something or I'm thinking about something and I'm using my inner voice to describe it, that for me is well, well and good. And my descriptions are, can be wonderfully creative and imaginative. Um, and that's how I do imagination. That's how some of you will do it, especially if you're one of the beginners, one of the sort of people invited to look at this um, who's, who are checking in now or watching this later. And, and, and there's others who are more feeling things. So, you know, I can hear anything in my imagination, but I don't see it so clearly, and I'm really good at feeling. So what I did was, in terms of helping people make intuitive decisions, one of the other things we built on MindStore, and if you did or have gone into the MindStore online platform, those of you who are beginners, to get that uh, free uh, program where I introduce you to the general ideas of what I'm about, um, and then what it does is I give you a full mind store type uh, relaxation uh, meditation type thing. And, and I get you to use there uh, the our three finger type thing, the Kibera Mudra and the tip of the tongue trigger thing. And if you're on mind store courses or the island or anything else I did with you, then we all did that. And what you've done over all those years, and if you're a beginner, you'll do it very quickly, is you've built up an anchor between these three fingers and that tongue position just behind your front two teeth, tip of the tongue, resting there, you've created an anchor to, to the alpha theta rhythm that Mindstow is based on, that place where we access both left and right brains and, and where we are potentially geniuses. And so um, once you trust that, you've got a decision. Should I, should I take home this uh, this pack of supplements. You're, you're in a health food store or whatever. And you can pick them up on your left hand, let's say, put your right hand, three fingers together, tip of the tongue trigger, and simply ask yourself, where else should I buy this, this product at this time? And because you've got the tip of the tongue trigger in place in the three fingers, there's a lot of alpha rhythm around. Just simply close your eyes. And in your imagination, look up and see a traffic light. And it's pretty obvious here, if it's green, then yes, go with it. If it's red, stop, don't. There is no amber in this model. It's straightforward, green or red, traffic light, trust that. And the attitude to it is, whatever first comes to your mind, that's what you trust. So for visual people, that's been very powerful. Uh, especially if you're regularly using MindStore and you're kind of trusting yourself with all the techniques and so on. And then for those of us who, like me, are audio, that was more just a simple, uh, still again, holding it up, uh, should I should I buy this product right now? Close your eyes, tip of the tongue trigger, your three fingers, and ask yourself simply yes or no. And you'll hear coming back, yes or no. And it's pretty obvious what to do. Then on the other hand, if you take your um, stronger hand, left or right, um, and, and so I, you know, I'm more right-handed, so I would take the product and hold it and ask myself, this is for the kinesthetic thing, the feeling thing. I said, should I, should I take home this product today? And 
on my left hand, I'm waiting to feel, as I do right now, a, which is fascinating, a cool feeling, rather than, say, a warm feeling. If my hand was warm, that would be, yes, take home the product. If it's cool, then don't take the product home. And I think what the feedback is from that, from me to you, the source, is we really do need to look at this supplement carry on. I'm saying carry on because the assumption is because they're good for one person, maybe good for someone else. I think you really need to personally test. And this is why this is very important just now because a lot of us are getting advice to use certain supplements and so on and so forth. And I've even suggested some things and I will tonight as well. But because they work for me, you need to test by using what you learn tonight um, to check that they, took, they work for you. So they're, they're the simple day-to-day, moment-to-moment, mind slow techniques that I've taught for years and people have more than likely probably missed them on the courses because they were more excited about programming their goals and their dreams. And maybe really at that point, you know, it just went over their head. But it's but but, but this is now the time when we need these things. <clears throat> because, you know, I was down in Waitrose today because of, you know, getting that tip off, which hasn't happened yet. I mean, down, well, I might as well go shopping today rather than tomorrow, because if it is announced tonight, tomorrow in the shopping might not be so pleasant. Went down today, it was still fairly busy and a lot of stuff wasn't available. Um, and, you know, and as I said last thing, I think people go into to overshop, uh, the very fact they've got that anxiety and that real negative, greedy, kind of I don't care about anyone else attitude is going to be lowering their immune system and by, by bizarrely going to probably open themselves up to the potential of infection because of the diminished, you know, staying even, staying upbeat, staying, listen to this word, loving and caring is going to be better for you. So, but then I did look at some products on the shelves and, and I, I, I used that today. I said, should I buy this or not? Yes or no? No, I didn't. Yes, yes. Should I buy one? No. Should I buy two? Yes. Bought two. Um, and that's how it worked. Um, so that's simple, basic mind store um, decision making techniques. Another technique before we go into the wonderful stuff that Hazel uh, is going to supply us with. I also thought it's worth, you can see here, I've got a little um, pendulum. And so for 35, nearly 40 years, you know, I have been dowsing. Uh, and using dowsing as a decision-making thing. I'm, I'm very I'm very confident with it. Um, so, you know, sometimes I will do the dowsing thing uh, before I go out, simple yes or no. Um, if you don't know, if you haven't doused before, I wouldn't necessarily rush into it, um, but you might because we're going to apparently have all that extra time in our lives. You can maybe teach yourself, learn, you know, you know, check out on the internet and down, download. Um, and, and, and maybe teach yourself and begin to use very simple, simple things. And maybe again, if we do something next week, I'll show you how I do and the technique I use. And maybe that'll work for you because it definitely works for me. So that's something else. But let's come to, let's come to what a Hazel um, was able to provide. Um, it, it's, um, it's really, really powerful for, and I've used it with her. And she has been a great help to me because I've had challenges with my health in the past. I don't publicise them. No one needs to know. In fact, you don't need to know uh, what, what that's been. But I've had to work with stuff for about 30 years. I've had to take a line of working with complementary or sometimes alternative, very often alternative, to what was being offered by the medical profession. And so I, find, I found I attracted at the very right time in my life the people who helped me at that stage. And Hazel was one of those. And she... Um, stayed alongside me and helped me you know, exceptionally well. And, and by the way, helped a lot of other people that I recommended her to at the time. She no longer does that particular work at the moment, um, but she came out of her, uh, you know, her sort of break from it to respond to my call last night. So she sent me an email that I'm going to read to you. And she's given me a link, which I will then post up after this. So you get that link and maybe we'll give you one or two other links. Um, so that you can find your own way. So I'm, I'm going to read it from here. So, you, you know, just bear with me with this. Um, so she says, there are many forms of self-testing using our muscles. Remember last night I was talking about the kinesiology I used uh, with the guys on the stage. Was, we're using something like that, the kinesiology type approach. Um, but instead of someone testing you, a kinesiology uh, you know, therapist or like me having fun on a stage, 
you're going to be able to do this to yourself. So she says, there are many forms of self-testing using our muscles. However, the sway test is the easiest one to start with. This allows us to access our subconscious, which knows what we need here and now, as well as what our blocks are to healthy and abundant life. Now, that's already pretty powerful, is it not? It is not possible to get accurate answers for any question that is trying to diagnose medical conditions in yourself. There is just too much emotional investment in the answer. You're asking your subconscious to give you to give you for you to receive an accurate response. So, you, you, what are you going to get this tool? You know, you don't use it to sort of you know um, win the lottery tomorrow night, or don't use. I think you can use it to self-diagnose yourself. Don't be ridiculous. But in terms of what it does do and what, what she's saying here, absolutely grasp this. It's very powerful. She says, there are lots of uses for this tool, though as it gives you a direct line to your all-knowing subconscious, or as I like to call it, source, to start, you will need to do a baseline test to use either your name or a word, and the word we use is love. That won't surprise you. Whichever you feel drawn to, if you're drawn to using the word love or just drawn to using your first name, that's fine. Just trust yourself at any given moment. And stand with your weight balanced on both feet. In fact, you, you may want to do this right now. Why not? Stand uh, with balanced on both feet, knees relaxed, hands by your side, and either close your eyes or defocus them. If you can't stand, it is possible to do this test sat upright on the front edge of a chair, like doing Mindstore. The responses tend to come more slowly if you do that, and may be very slight, but they will be there. So whether you're standing or sitting, breathe in and relax as you breathe out. Again, there you go, classic Mindstore. Then say or think your name or the word love. If nothing happens, let go of mental pressure for something to happen and just repeat your word again. Don't overthink it or overlay the word with thoughts like this isn't right or this is wrong or this won't work. You know, the usual stuff. So just relax, calm down. Just know that eventually when you're ready, when you surrender into connecting to the source, your subconscious and you really just let it do its thing then it'll come okay if you find yourself swaying forward either very slightly or quite a strong movement that's great then reset yourself and either say a name that isn't yours or use the word hate so my name's Jack you know I'm focusing Jack one say, oh, I move forward. Oh, good, something's happening. And, and then I say, okay, my name's Bill. Move back a little bit, even if it's a subtle movement or quite an exaggerated movement, you accept what's there. Or you use love and hate, pretty obvious. Um, your body should respond by swaying backwards. I'll explain what you can now achieve with this in a minute. So as long as you understand that, the thing is to be relaxed and, you know, you're standing there, you know, you close your eyes, whatever, you say your name and you just wait to see what happens and you just, without forcing it, just, and you might just tip forward, tip back. Some of you are probably experiencing right now. Uh, well done. Um, and once you know you can do it going forward and you're not pushing it and it's just happening, then you would do the opposite with hate and or another name. So then she says, if you find yourself either moving in the opposite way to my description above, in other words, backwards to your name, and forwards to another name, or not moving at all, then your polarity is reversed. Now that's fascinating when we come later on to what Roger Callahan was doing. This is exciting. Um, and reinforces everything we're going to do tonight. So she's saying that polarity is reversed. This is easily corrected by using Dr. Barbara Stone's seven centering corrections. And here she supplies me with a link to go on YouTube and for Barbara to teach you what to do. So that's fantastic. That's something that's to clear when you're out of when you're out of balance, out of sync, you know, or, or you're 
uh, reversed um, polarity. So I'll say I'll put it up after this workshop. So look, 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 or this sorry, this session. Look forward to that. Once you've done these movements, take a short break. So in other words, once you've done her movements, take a short break, drink some water, and do the stay the the, the, the sway test, baseline test again. And all should be well now. Fantastic. You can use this now for testing practical practical things like such as, funnily enough, do I need this supplement? Interesting that she's in the same wavelength. Can you ask this as a question or you can make it a statement? In other words, I need this supplement. Or simply ask, uh, do I need this supplement? And, and, and see what happens. Forward, a forward movement, of course, means yes. You can also check how much to take as a dose. I tend to use, do I need more than one? Do I need more than two? And once I get to no, a backwards movement, I ask, do I need X? And if it also is a no, then just lower the amount gradually until you get to a yes. So you go up, you check, you get a dose, and it's like, okay, is it the number that we just stopped at? Is it the one before? And you eventually get the yes, and you know the dosage. How cool is that? Um, it's because that's at that moment your personal need. Not overdoing it because, well, everybody takes 3,000 milligrams of, of, you know, vitamin C right now. Maybe that's good, maybe it's not. For you, maybe for someone else. Um, you can also use the help to control emotions. For example, this morning I woke up feeling very anxious and fearful, she says. I said some affirmations which included, I am safe and I am strong. Now let's take a note of them. I am safe and I am strong. Millions and millions and millions of people are going to need those affirmations in the coming weeks and months. Um, we need them right now. Am I safe? Am I strong? And though I could feel my anxiety easing, I then did the sway test to check that my subconscious believed it too by moving me forward to am I safe and am I strong? And she moved forward. So she knew, yes, not only does she believe it, but her subconscious believes it. I'm going to pick up in affirmations uh, later on as well. So there you go. You're using a sway technique. It's, it's not unlike the dowsing thing. It's a similar principle. It's the muscle testing principles as well, but and lots of other things. And it's very, very powerful. Now, old, old, old Roger Callahan, before he passed on, used to say, you know, that 90% um, of the time, 90% of people can use these simple techniques. And I know from having a chat with with Hazel today, there are slightly more advanced things that sometimes you need to do if you can't clear. But go check Barbara's, Barbara's stuff. Get into the habit of using it. Get confident with it. And listen to this. Share it for goodness sake, family and friends. Because making decisions uh, in supermarkets in the near future might be might be really critical. And, and also, should I read this book? Really? Um, should I be watching that TV program? Really? Etc. Etc. You know, we need to obviously accentuate the positive this time. Keep our immune systems up. So, thanks to Hazel for that. Fantastic. I hope you understood that. Um, what I'll probably do is cut and paste that email. If uh, you know, if you don't mind, uh, and I'll stick it on um, on Facebook here, so you can all access that. But let me maybe let me do that tomorrow because I've had an extraordinarily busy day. Uh, and it would be good to just settle down after this. Um, so that's that. Let's move on a little bit. Let's go back to this managing anxiety and fear. And just quickly before I get into it, uh, last night I I was I I felt I'd done well by you. And, you know I, I thought I'd done a good job. I got all that feedback. I thought fantastic. That went really well. I'm so pleased I risked myself to do that. And I was great, really grateful for all that feedback you gave me. Uh, and, st and since still, and nearly a thousand people's watched it now, so that's amazing. So what I, what I did was I fell asleep last night. You know, you know I'm, I'm reading a novel in bed, a little bit of light. I don't read, you know, screens or anything in bed. Why would you? Um, but I, you know, fell asleep after a wee while after reading another few pages of the novel. And, um, you know, fell asleep fairly quickly as I do. Middle of the night, wakened up, guy my age. Um, <laughs> I went off to the loo, um, came back out of bed, ready to go to sleep again, and suddenly I realised that as I was getting to sleep, that's pre-dreamy type thing, 
that my mind was wandering into fearful situations around the potential of the country going into lockdown because I mentioned it last night and I, and by the way, lots of other police sources confirmed, you know, that that was going to happen. So maybe they changed their mind for some reason. Who knows? Um, but then again, the police, they be trusting. I don't know either, but it came from good sources, folks. But anyway, um, so it had some, some level, it had disturbed me. And, you know, I'm human just like you. So what happened was, as it disturbed me, I realised, well, oh, wait a minute. And I was now awake because, of course, my beta frequencies are coming along. I'm triggering the response to a fear or anxiety, even if it was only subtle. And so then what I did was I, I suddenly took three deep breaths and exhaled. Uh, I then sort of lay flat on my back, three fingers, tip of the tongue, triggered, my eyes were closed. And I just was waiting to see where this, not, no, no longer thinking about it, but where was my body somehow or other connected to that, uh, that fear or anxiety. Found what it was, started breathing into it, like I suggested last night, and it dissipated. And then, then to get to sleep, I simply used the classic mind store sleep technique thing. We may get time to do it later on in full detail, but at a simple level, I simply used the mantra, I'm falling into deep, relaxing sleep now. I'm falling into a deep, relaxing sleep now. I'm falling into a deep, relaxing sleep now. And you know what? I don't remember how I did it because you're not counting them. You're just saying it and bang, off I went to sleep. So there you go. Simple technique again. But the, but the power of affirmations, of course, I've already, in a post uh, over last week or the week before, and I just go back through my timeline, I, I deliberately shared with you powerful affirmations uh, that you can use to in, improve your immune system, empower your immune system, uh, just like, like uh, Hazel's affirmation, uh, am I safe, uh, uh, am I strong? Uh, and another you refer to, I am safe, I am strong, once you're using it as an affirmation. And those affirmations I put in my timeline, so go back, you know, don't, you know, if you just go back and find them, don't be lazy, it'll take you a few moments to flip through my stuff. Take a note of them and start using them. Use them three times, alpha theta rhythm, you know, close your eyes, powerful program into your subconscious. Wonderful tools, but let's move on. So Roger Callahan, the great and wonderful Roger Callahan, and some of you may, would have been there on the stage with me in London in that little theatre where him and I did a programme together for a couple of days. I mean, what a joy, what a joy to, for me, and especially after to go and have dinner with him. He became a great friend, a fantastic inspiration of a man. And one of the great gifts he gave us was his algorithm, his method for releasing ourselves from fear and anxiety. And of course, that's now rife. So I'm going to explain it to you. Now, when I my experience with audiences over the years is, or anyone, when I first explain this to an audience or to anyone, it feels complicated. And the only reason it feels complicated is because you're having to sort of write some things down and you've got to sort of kind of vaguely understand something that initially feels weird and strange. Of course, once you start doing it yourself, it just becomes an automatic, you want to do it three or four times, it just becomes part of your life and therefore it's easy enough. So what I suggest you do, if you haven't done already, is get yourself a bit of paper and a pencil or pen, uh, I'll give you a moment or two, and there's some stuff I'm going to get to write down. So I'm going to give you a process that you can use yourself and teach others. Always give it back to where it came from. It was Roger Callan. He gave me permission to share this uh, in my programmes, uh, 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 and I, I'm grateful for that. I can't, I've not got the time to go into Roger's story here. Find lots about Roger Callan and Thought Fuel Therapy in all the usual places. Uh, um, his wonderful book, Tapping the Healer Within, unconditionally recommend you go and get it as soon as you can, Tapping the Healer Within. Profoundly impact, has impacted my life since the moment um, I was introduced to it by a wonderful Mindstore member. Um, so, here we are. Um, so, the best way to do this, yeah. What I want you to do is, I want you to write down um, some abbreviations, and I'll explain what they are. And I'm going to write them down. So I've got I've got my notebook here, you know, a, a moleskin A4 type notebook, okay? I'm going to write, let me just write this down for a moment, then I'll explain it and you can write it down, okay? So give me a moment. Give me a second to get into it.
Okay, so I hope you can see this. What I've got here is um, a bunch of abbreviations in a column, okay? Now, if you've got the page in front of you, let me just read out uh, the abbreviations. Then I'll explain them and don't get all panicky about it because, oh my God, will I remember? You will remember this, don't worry. Um, so at the very top there, I, I, and I made a mistake, but then I'm human, is that okay? So you can see we've got U E U A C B. Okay, uh, U E U A C B. So write that down as a, at the top of the column, there's three ab abbreviations, U E U A C B. Okay, I'll explain what they are in a moment. And then under that, you've got E O E C E O. So write that down without you concerning yourself. What does it mean? Will I understand it? Just write it down. Trust me. E O E C E O D L D R. That was D L D R R C W. R A W, so that's R C W R A W, and then H H B, then one, the word two, and then the number five, one two five, and then H H B again, H H B again, and then finally a repeat at the top. And for the the boss of the pillar of the of the pillar, U E U A C B. Okay. So I'm hoping you've all got that. And again, not tonight. Tomorrow I'll put up the um, the links. Uh, I'll put up the link right after this to uh, for. Um, uh, Hazel's thing, but all this other stuff, it'll take a bit of time, so I'll do that tomorrow, okay? And you'll get that, including her, her letter, or her, her, her uh, um, email to me. So let me go through them quickly. U-E-U-A-C-B. Now, without getting into all the history, they just have to trust me. For God's sake, you know, why would I be teaching you something that isn't, isn't real and it didn't work for thousands and thousands of people and for, Roger, millions of people around the world? Um... And so these are position, these are places after 25 years of research, almost like Chinese meridian points where they may well, you know, like I'm going to see my Chinese doctor tomorrow, all going well uh, to get my sort of you know, six weekly kind of booster energy thing. And he's going to use, uh, you know, acup acupuncture. And so he take the needle. And these are, these are the places that he found, Roger found are really powerful under the eye, right on the eye socket, under the eye, you're going to take one finger or two fingers and just tap there vigorously. One finger's fine. You're not going to sort of knock yourself over the tap, but you're not just like, you know, caressing it. So you've really got to tap it so you know you're tapping and can feel it. And you can do both eyes at the same time or simply use one depending on what's going on. And that's fine. UA is underarm. And you found a great point under here. Now just very, very quickly for men, it's, it's level with your nipple. So for men, level with your nipple under your arm. That's where you tap. For I've been told uh, the best way to explain this for women, you know, is in the middle of their bra strap underneath their arm. So I'll leave that to you, ladies. Okay. Um, underarm, collarbone is just tapping the collarbone. You can't. You could do both say under your arm, but it's going to look silly. You're just using one arm uh, under the arm. And now the collarbone, you can again use both fingers. I tend to do both. If I got the chance, I'm using both. Right on the collarbone, either side there of the centre, tapping vigorously. I'll come back to, to that in a moment. And then you've got what Callahan called at 9G. One of the things he discovered was on the back of her fist, so if you form a fist, I, 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 I'm right-handed, so I'm using my left fist. Um, if, you, if you consider your two knuckles, your little finger, your ring finger, and you come down about two centimetres between them. You come to this point here. And what you do is you tap there vigorously. And, you, and as you're tapping there vigorously and continue to do so, you go through uh, these movements. 
And these are so beautifully uh, created by him, so powerful using left and right brain. It's fantastic. The man was a genius. So the first thing you're doing is you're tapping here now. You've done the under eye, you've done the around the collarbone thing. You're now tapping here vigorously and your eyes are open. E -O -E, e -O is eyes open. You look straight ahead, your eyes are open. Then guess what? Eyes closed. All the time tapping. Then eyes open. So that was E O eyes open, E C eyes closed, E O eyes open. Now look at this. Next one is D L. You look down left. You look down to the left, but notice you don't move your head. You just take your eyes down to the left, then down to the right. So D L D R. Now what he was getting us to do at that point was to use the autonomic nervous system. The left side of your brain operates the right side of your body, and vice versa. Looking down to the left, right brain looking to the to the right, left brain, what a genius, wow, mind store. So what happened is uh, you do that, and then you do RCW, which means round clockwise. So look what you do now. You now take your eyes in the periphery of your of your vision, you go all the way around with your eyes in a clockwise direction, and then you come back around again in an anti-clockwise uh, uh, direction, and all the time tapping vigorously here. You're still looking straight ahead, but your eyes are going all the way around the outskirts, and back again. And guess what? Integrating left and right brain again. Fantastic. Wonderful stuff. And then he says, OK, let's use a right brain. Um, and so what he did was he said, hum two bars of happy birthday. Well, guess what we're all doing now? Hey, eh? what an interesting coincidence. If ever its time was now. So the coincidence, the synchronicity of that, for goodness sake. So we all, all know happy birthday now, don't we, with washing our hands. So you just hum to yourself two bars. And all the time, you're um, you're just still doing this vigorous tapping on the on this gamut spot. You're saying mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's all you need, two bars. And then he says to use the left brain, count from one to five. Your left brain does counting, so one, two, one, two, three, four, five, and then. Because he knew we were hardly using a right brain, the genius Roger said, hum happy birthday again, another two bars, just to close it off. So here we go. And then we finish off holding the whole pillar up by repeating the original algorithm. So that is under eye, under arm, collarbone. Whoa, and that's it, guys. Except, so... Something else. So Roger figured out this whole elaborate, it seems elaborate right now, but once you've done it a few times, it's so simple. Um, algorithm for dealing with stress. Sorry, dealing with a fear and anxiety. But he knew that somehow or other, uh, you, you actually have to either feel fear or anxiety in the moment to work with it, or you need to think about it if you're thinking of it in advance. For example, you're fearful of flying, although God knows when we'll do that again. Um, you know, you can sit in the departure lounge and do this before you get on the plane and it'll diminish and so on because you're not really facing the fear in that moment in terms of it being profound as you step over into the plane. But the thing is, um, what he got, what he did, he spent uh, 25 years perfecting this stuff. He found the best way, why I call it thought fuel therapy, was you were thinking of whatever it was that was causing you a challenge. He, you put it into the thought field and then this therapy would deal with it and diminish it and it would be gone. Guy was unbelievably talented, amazing, way before his time. And um, so what what he got you to do was, so I want you to write down this amazing uh, statement. You would say to yourself, even although, so write that down right now, even although, even although I am anxious about even although I am anxious about, and then you would state what it is. Let's just use the obvious one. Even although I'm anxious about coronavirus, I unconditionally love and accept myself. Beautiful. Even although I am anxious about flying, the bully at school, you know, it goes on and on and on. Even although I'm anxious about coronavirus, I unconditionally love and accept myself. And he said, repeat this three times and then do the tapping sequence. But before that, something else. 
Before you begin, give yourself, on a scale of, personal scale of 1 to 10, give yourself what they call a SUD score, on a scale of 1 to 10. 10 is how you're feeling the anxiety at that moment. At the moment you're doing it, not how it was like two days ago or, or what it was a year ago. What it is right this moment. So that's a 10. I'm very anxious about, you know, I woke up middle of the night there. I didn't end up using it. I, did, I just got back to sleep. But let's say it really built into my consciousness. And I was sitting this morning going, oh God, I'm really frightened of this coronavirus thing. And you say, okay, that's a 10. However it was, when it would be gone. So, so that you know, as you go through the process, it disappears. And you get feedback all the time of where you are in the score. You see yourself go from 10 to 7 and so on. It's really genius. And so then, what, what, to, to cut a long story short, he found that, remember the 90% of people, 90% of the time it's going to work every time? He found, going back to what Hazel forewarned us about, was he found that people could also be, uh, they could be um, reversed. Um, polarity. Or he called it, Psychologically reversed. Psychological reversal. That was his great discovery. And what he believed was that if we're psychologically reversed, it doesn't matter what treatment we take, whether we're tapping or whether we're taking supplements or we're taking medicine or chemotherapy or whatever, if we're psychologically reversed, it's not going to work, whatever, no matter what it is. So, so being, being aligned the right way um, uh, so that you're polarity is the way it should be. Now again, maybe the idea that the chi in the Chinese system flows in a certain direction and suddenly it's going the other direction, you would be psychologically reversed or you'd be, your, 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 your polarization would have been reversed. And you just have to trust that. And I mean, for and how you know is, you know, sometimes we've all done it. You, you walk into a room and you go, why have I walked in here? Why, why am I in this room? Why have I opened the fridge? Now, you know, it's not because I'm, you know, a wee bit older now. I've been doing that since I was 16. You know, you've all been doing it. Just, and the reason you, that happens to you is because you're psychologically reversed. In that moment, your polarisation is switched. And and it can happen to you when you, 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 you're speaking, suddenly words come out the reverse way. You know, you say something the wrong way. Like, Where did that come from? Just psychologically reversed. In that moment, something's caused it. What he found was to cure it quickly, you to do this. You do a kind of karate chop from both hands into yourself. So that that paddy bit there on the side of your hand, you're just doing that with both of them. He found that that worked. And he found another thing that could cause it to get psychologically reversed tended to be toxins. That won't surprise you. Typical toxins he found was was like um, soap powders that are highly, you know, they've got those, um, you know, scents in them. God knows where they got them from. And, 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 and fabric conditioners of all things. Oh my God. And shampoos and soaps that are highly scented and, and perfume even and aftershave. Who still wears that stuff? Um, and so on. And he said that, you know, if these things are interfering and causing you to get reversed, maybe you stop wearing them. But, and, but initially you can get some joy by doing this. What I said to him was, for the sake of my clients, is it not just fair for me to say, look, you're already psychologically reversed, so always begin with this. Because if you are, it'll reverse it, and if you aren't, you don't need to worry anyway. And so what I agreed with them to do with you is to say to yourself, even although I, look what I'm doing, even although I'm anxious about coronavirus, I unconditionally love and accept myself. Even though I'm anxious about coronavirus, I unconditionally love and accept myself. Even though I'm anxious about coronavirus, I unconditionally love and accept myself. And you say it three times. And then, only then, do you begin the under eye. So you start by under eye. You maybe do that about, you know, 10, 15 times kind of thing. You don't have to count them, just be aware of it. Underarm. And all the time you're doing this, say, you know, anxious about coronavirus, anxious about coronavirus anxious about coronavirus, anxious about coronavirus. Then you don't think about anything other than that. And you now just do the tapping thing on the gamut spot, two centimetres down from the middle of both of those knuckles. And now you go through the whole rigmarole. Eyes open, eyes closed, eyes open, down left, down right, all the way around clockwise, back anti-clockwise, hum the two bars. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. One, two, three, four, five. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then back to under eye, 
underarm collarbone and then at that point you ask yourself so what's my score it was 10 at the start then you realize oh my anxiety has gone down to eight wow you do it again and slowly you get to when you get to one it's all over something you do you accept it's all over and if you ever get stuck in the middle just do the the catty chop thing again and pick up from where you are till you get to one or two and you can instruct people to do that and have people do this in front of you and, and you don't stand there well, look how wonderful i am i've solved you know roger callahan discovered this you know i've watched some people on tv use this who don't always see where they got it from my goodness unbelievable sometimes they do sometimes they don't i don't understand that i've never used md's techniques without their permission and i'll continue to seek their permission before i share anything but anyway there you go um so um that's that. And and I would, to be quite frank with you, you could be at some degree like I didn't, I wasn't aware of till I was in, back in bed last night from you know, peeing that, um, that my subconscious at some level was disturbed and uh, there was a degree of anxiety. So why don't you just assume that it may or may not be there and just do it every two or three times a day. We're all now washing our hands. Two or three times a day, use that tapping cycle. Just keep, oh, everything we can do to keep our immune system strong. Absolutely fantastic. So again, I will put that up tomorrow on Facebook so you can get a hold of it if you've missed it tonight. I, I saw one or two people sort of posting it there. Maybe if you watch this again, if you're going to, you know, if you're in a different time zone, uh, then you can maybe get it quicker than waiting for me to do it um, tomorrow. So that's that. Let me go back and see if there's anything else we can, can cover here. Okay, time's buying on, oh, there you go. Um, by the way, just a quickie. Every time I, before I take my supplements, the ones I'm choosing to have that day, I, I do this because you remember what you said, no point in taking any supplement if you're psychologically reversed or your polarities reversed. So I do that first, he told me to do it, and then take your supplement. Nice wee trick, okay? But nevertheless, there you go. What else here, quickly? Um, someone asked a question today about, they were on one of the more recent courses where I introduced them to downstairs and upstairs in the classic House of the Red Roof course. Some of you attended that. What I was doing in those latter Best of Mind Store courses was I was always adding new material for the people who were you know, the loyal repeaters. So, that, you know, they were always, you know, getting the original stuff, but they were also getting something new. And we went upstairs and we did go downstairs. And someone's asking me if there's somewhere to get, getting that online. Oh, no, no, there isn't. But we did send you out notes. So, I don't know, get in touch and we'll see. I, you know, those notes, they may well, I hope we still got them, may not have. Um, and I would say if you don't have them and you can't find them, then maybe you're not supposed to. I would suggest that's the thing there. Or maybe you missed the email and because at some level you weren't ready for that. And those were, remember, very, very advanced techniques. Maybe just trust yourself you're not ready for them. Anyway, they're so advanced, I'm not going to share them on here, for especially for those beginners. that you know They've got a learning curve to go through and they don't need to freak them out with this sort of really advanced stuff we do as we all know it you know in the beginning you go oh that's ridiculous like even the tapping thing oh that's ridiculous until you start using it you go oh my god and, and there your mind's open for more stuff so anyway um something else here um yeah just just some quick simple techniques to remember um that in the mind store methodology of the Rented House of the Red Roof, and you know, those of you who don't have that because you're a newbie, you can you can on you can in um Amazon I, I believe you can still get my book. And by the way, there's some excuse my language here, lunatic. We think it's an ex-employee, we're not sure, because a lot of it's not factually correct, some of it might be. And he's just rubbished my book and rubbished me. I think he's done it in every page or something, I'm a good maniac. Um, look, if, if that's going to put you off, then, you know, pff, good luck to you. Um, I would just, you know, if you want, get the book and you can go through all of that stuff. Yeah. And Until such times as there's an online 
course available for the thing, and we're going to do that, especially this year. Get so much I want to cover this year, and because we're going to all be in, so it should be easy to do. Uh, uh, let's not joke about that. Let's hope that never really happens. Um, but nevertheless, it is the plan 2020 to get all that stuff recorded, so you, it's that you've got access to it. But nevertheless, just remind you, on the way into the house, we had the shower, the, sh the classic Mindstore shower. Remind yourself to do that. You think about it, you come home and you wash your hands. Make sure every time you're going to meditate, remember meditation, meditation, meditation. It is the new place to boost your energy that the world's telling us about. We've known about it for God knows how long and millions of people long before I even get involved in this, going back through the years and the centuries um, across the world uh, in all sorts of cultures. And the scientists are now catching up so suddenly it's kind of, it's legitimate. You know, for goodness sake, just meditation, meditation, meditation. But in our technique, we actually wash in that showering cubicle. Remi those of you who've done it before, remind yourself to do that. Uh, you could do that, aim to do it three times a day. Now, there you go, especially if we're going to be at home. Um, uh, so there's that. And of course, on the way out, the energising beam. If there was ever a reason to use the energising beam before we do venture out into our world to do our shopping, to go and get, if we need it, medicine, to go and be of service to some other human being, as long as they keep allowing us to do that, even just to go out to walk your dog as I do, you know, three times a day, and with the, the social distance, charge yourself up the energy you so you're maximising your strength and your immune system. Mind store, for goodness sake, works. I had no idea when I created all this stuff that it was going to be absolutely relevant now in 2020. How could I possibly? Although, if I had consulted a powerful astrologer, they would say, hey, wait, 2020, Jack, it's going to be an interesting year for the world. Because they've been predicting this for a long, long time. Uh, that this change was taking place. They didn't see specifically what it was, but they knew it was all coming at exactly the dates that have so far happened. And tomorrow's a biggie. And there's other great dates. So, you know, I, I quite interested in all of that. The good thing about the astrology they're interested in, it's all looking good long term. Bit of a rough ride for a while. And we're in it now, so there you go. Um, like as if by coincidence, I've just looked over at my inbox and my iPad where I had uh, Hazel's wonderful uh, email. Guess what's just come in in the last little while? Joanna, Joanne Callahan, Roger's wonderful wife, who I keep in touch with, has sent me out uh, safety net of TFT in a world of chaos. Whoa, what a coincidence. What a wonderful piece of synchronicity. And I know she's not listening to this. So that is the universe, the source, banging a big symbol, dang, for you to listen to what I covered there. Go search it out, go find it, start using it, share it with loved ones and friends. So that's uh, 7.54, um, we're almost there. Let me see if there's anything else I can help you with. Yep, um, I was mentioning last night the thing about, you know, passive meditation, active meditation. We're obviously the active meditation world that we operate in and we're good at that. Um, but I'm also up for mantras like anybody else who uses that for the passive. You know, you do the head to toe relaxation, you're onto the other side of the river, find a nice place to sit. And, and then what you would do is you would, you would then use a mantra. Now, there are wonderful classic, you know, spiritual mantras that we can get out of the, you know, out of, um, out of India. Some of them are amazing and they're, you know, they're tested. They've been around for thousands of years and they work. It, those of you who want to connect to source and connect to the universe and God and all that kind of stuff, that's your package, that's great. And um, some of you more, you know, more scientifically based, more left brain, you think, well, I'm not really into that stuff. And that's perfectly fine. Anywhere, you know, it's a broad church, uh, mind story, you can sit wherever you want um, and you'll be fine. Um, so you can just use any old uh, thing as a mantra. I used to take, say to people, if you, if you fancy yourself um, getting an apartment in the city of Barcelona, then if you want to do some passive meditation, just get down into that beautiful location somewhere across the river and just repeat over and over again, Barcelona, 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 three fingers, tip of the tongue trigger, you're saying to Barcelona, Bar what a beautiful mantra and what a beautiful 
stunning city. Let's hope we can all go visit again sometime soon. Um, in, any word that works for I, I, I taught a bunch of nurses and medical people in ITL in Kilmarnock many years ago now, and uh, I shared with them the notion of using Ailsa Craig, which is that beautiful island, you know, that sort of powerful outcrop thing that sits out there in the middle of uh, the Firth of Clyde, you know. Uh, they used to jokingly, Scotland call it Paddy's Milestone. Um, because, you know, it was one of these milestones coming across. You know, I've sailed, I sailed to Ireland, Northern Ireland, of Lars when I sailed, but it was years ago, you know, you, you see it coming for miles and miles, and it takes forever to come up to the Elsa Craig, and you eventually get there, and you kind of go past the Elsa Craig, a huge big rock thing, and birds and all that, guillemots and all that, and you gradually, and you keep looking back, and it's there forever and ever and ever, and then you get to Northern Ireland. Um, but, but... And anybody who lives in Ayrshire, anywhere in Ayrshire or Narran or any of those, but you see it, you see it all the time. You look out the coast, it just sticks there, it's there. And so I thought it was beautiful because if you say Elsa Craig, Elsa Craig, Elsa Craig, that's a perfect meditational mantra. But more importantly, every time they saw Elsa Craig, it reminded them, hey, I should be meditating. And every time they meditated and they thought about Elsa Craig, you know, it just it reminded them of how beautiful it is, the Ayrshire coast to walk along a beach, to walk along some of the, the hilltops and the, God knows the beautiful island of Arran. Oh my God, I hope I can get back there again soon. So there you go guys, two minutes to, to the hour. I hope again that's been helpful. My thinking is we'll do it again next week. I'll come on again on Wednesday. There's one or two things that will show up between now and then that I might want to share with you. And of course I can go deeper into Mind Store and or whatever's happening. Thanks for all of you who have tuned in again. Uh, you know, thanks for those of you who have shared it with other people. You've passed it on to your family and friends. We're only doing this to help them. Um, and, you know, if, you, if questions do occur, you know, feel free to send them. I, I'm going to continue to post on, um, on Facebook, you know, encouragement and so on. Every day as best I can. You wouldn't, you wouldn't mind if Saturdays and Sundays I, I take quality recovery time and get back to it. So Monday to Friday, by and large, I'm going to do it. Occasionally I don't, just because if you trust I'm really busy. Uh, and if I sometimes do it on a Saturday or Sunday, it's because something's come across my mind. I think it's, I should do it. Um, and in my own spare time, I'll do that. So anyway, again, thanks for watching. Thanks for participating. I look forward to seeing all these things on the left-hand side when I revisit this. Uh, thanks for all those thumbs up and those those hearts. Um, really appreciate it. it. Just It's good for me to know I'm doing some good here. So... All the best, guys. See you next Wednesday. Same time, same place. Remember, it only works. Bye now.